Hello and welcome to Civil War Digital Digest. I'm Andy and we are on location here at Gettysburg National Military Park continuing our special uh, series of episodes while we're on a trip out east. Today we're here in front of one of my personal favorites on the battlefield, the monument for the 24th Michigan Volunteer Infantry. Now for me, this has a special connection. The 24th is a Detroit Wayne County Regiment. I was born in the Metro Detroit area and I did my master's thesis on the 24th Michigan and their actions here at the Battle of Gettysburg. But we're not here today just to talk about the 24th. But before we get going on that, I wanna say thank you to the Coffee Grinders, our patrons who support us financially and allow us to travel to come to a place like Gettysburg and share these stories with you. I also wanna say thank you to the National Park Service for letting us come out and be on location here at Gettysburg National Military Park. Today, we're here to talk about not the battle itself, but war and memory. It's not just that the soldiers fought here, but in the years afterwards, how did they memorialize their service here? How did they remember what they did here on the Battle of Gettysburg? Today, we're here to actually talk about Michigan Day at Gettysburg, the creation and dedication of the Michigan monuments that you see throughout the battlefield of Gettysburg. Soldiers didn't begin to memorialize their actions here at Gettysburg immediately after the battle for a variety of reasons. Of course, the war was continuing on, and while the National Cemetery was built right after the battle, the regimental monuments don't begin to appear here until the 1870s. In some cases, they begin as a hodgepodge process, but some states had an organized process to do all their monuments at one time. Michigan was one of the states that did it this way, and in June 1887, the legislature approved $20,000 to honor the seven infantry regiments, four cavalry regiments, one artillery battery, and the four companies of Michigan Burdan sharpshooters that served here at the Battle of Gettysburg. It also directed Governor Luce to appoint a commission to, in order to oversee this effort. Governor Luce appointed a commission consisting of George Briggs, President, Peter Lennon, and George Crawford. Now these men represented various Michigan regiments at the battle and they oversaw a larger organization that had various subcommittees, transportation, legislation, and the overall goal was to come up with a uniform, a relatively uniform design for the monuments here at Gettysburg to allocate how much money should go to the regiments and to organize the actual dedication of the monuments. The goal was to have one ceremony to bring as many veterans of Michigan here and to dedicate all the monuments on the battlefield on the same day, to have one day of celebration to Michigan's contribution here at the Battle of Gettysburg. Now the individual monuments for these regiments and batteries and companies vary, but they all have certain motifs, including the rest of the state of Michigan and a similar granite composition. The committee wanted to make sure that the statues would last as long as possible, so they wanted single pieces of stone or large pieces of stone to the maximum extent possible. They also dedicated $5,000 of their $20,000 budget for site preparation. At the time, there was no national military park, so the individual plots of land where the monuments were on had to be purchased individually and prepared to receive the monuments themselves. As the committee and its members worked to bring monuments here to the battlefield, one of the important roles was to find the exact placement for the Michigan monuments on the battlefield. They were, the individual regiments appointed their own committees and they worked with Colonel Backelder, who was one of the early pioneers in history at, here at Gettysburg. Now, Backelder through the 1860s, 70s, and 80s had a lively correspondence with most of the surviving generals who you can find his papers as the Backelder Papers, a three-volume set that for anyone that's studying the Battle of Gettysburg is an excellent resource. Now, Colonel Backelder worked with these committees and cited the locations of the various monuments, not necessarily where the regiment had fought the entirety of its battle, but at the most important point that it had served during the fighting. For example, the 24th Michigan here is located on McPherson's Ridge. This isn't their furthest point of advance on Harris Ridge early on the morning of July 1st, 1863, but it's where they fell back to and reformed to receive the assault of Pettigrew's Brigade of Heath's Division that afternoon. It was here that the, the members of the 24th Michigan made their famous defense of this ridge against the 26th North Carolina coming up from the west. And it was this little piece of land that Colonel Backelder thought best symbolized the service of the 24th Michigan here at Gettysburg. Most of the other Michigan monuments are located in the area of fighting of the second day, with the third Michigan monument being in the Peach Orchard, the first, fourth, and fifth Michigan being in the Wheatfield sector, and the 16th Michigan and the Michigan Sharpshooter monument being located on Little Round Top. 
the 7th Michigan Infantry, an I Battery, 1st Michigan Artillery, otherwise known as the 9th Michigan Battery. Their monuments are located on Cemetery Ridge, where their fighting positions were there. Finally, the Michigan Cavalry Brigade's monument is one large monument for all four Michigan Cavalry regiments that were here, the 1st, 5th, 6th, and 7th Cavalries that fought on East Cavalry Field, which is about three miles east of town and was part of the fighting on the third day. About two years after the initial legislation was passed, Michigan Day was celebrated here at Gettysburg, June 12, 1889. The Transportation Committee worked with railroads to bring in as many of the veterans as possible. And after an initial opening ceremony and benediction, including former Governor Blair, who had been the governor of Michigan during the war, and a benediction by Chaplain Way, who is the regimental chaplain of the 24th Michigan, they moved throughout the battlefield, dedicating all of the monuments with as many veterans as possible. One of the great things about this is a lot of the veterans got pictures with their monuments. For example, the 24th Michigan, which went into the Battle of Gettysburg with 496 men, had 126 men here for Michigan Day, of which 115 had actually been present at the battle. Of those 115, about half had been either wounded or captured during the fighting here on July 1st, 1863, when the regiment lost 80% casualties. This is representative of all the regiments. They tried, each brought about 100 to 200 men that were here, a large representation of the surviving veterans. This is only about 26 years after the war, so a lot of the veterans haven't passed on yet, though of course all of the regiments that are here continue to fight throughout the rest of the Civil War. Each regiment at its dedication had a speaker that was appointed to summarize their role in the battle and put in the, to put in the context of the larger fighting here at Gettysburg. Now, one of the interesting things is after Michigan Day, they chose to take transcripts of the entire ceremony, the speeches, and it was all put together into one book. And you've seen me holding it throughout the presentation. This was published later in 1889 as Michigan Day at Gettysburg. And it included the entire process of how the monuments were created. It includes a lot of the original documentation of their design and their building here at Gettysburg and everything from the ceremonies themselves here at Michigan Day. One of the other reasons we're here in front of the 24th Michigan Monument is I wanted to give you a sample of one of these speeches. And I picked one of the passages I found personally very moving. And it's a speech of Major White at his dedication of the 24th Michigan Monument. Edwin White was a captain in the 24th Michigan when it was first mustered in 1862. Early in 1863, he was promoted to major. And early on the morning of July 1st, he was commanding the brigade's Grand Guards. And so he consequently missed the opening actions here when Lieutenant Colonel Flanagan was wounded. He became second in command of the regiment during the fighting here on the ridge and was later wounded in the eye, losing the use of it. He continued on with service with the 24th for a few months afterwards, but found that the wound was too debilitating to allow him to continue service. And he resigned his commission and returned home to Michigan. At Gettysburg, everyone did full soldierly duty and filled the niche he was called upon to occupy. Officer and man, rank and file, all were in the places assigned them and all were equally brave and deserving of the highest praise. We grasp the hand of the living and try to show them how glad we are that an overruling providence protected them and spared their lives, not only through the terrible storm of shot and shell that fell around them that first July day, but for so many years thereafter and has brought them safely onward to this present, we would pay fitting homage to the silent ones who peacefully sleep on yonder hill or in the quiet God's acres in their own state and would garland their resting place with amaranthine flowers. Their memory we shall ever cherish as a priceless treasure. Many of the heads I see before me are tinged with gray. These facts touch us solemnly as we reflect that this may be for some of us our last reunion. How changed is all the landscape, and, as with all goodly things around us, so with us time has wrought most startling changes. Nature here has covered with her mantle of green, or has hidden with great growths of shrub or forest the spots which we thought we could easily recognize. And as we gaze about us, we stand amazed at the outlook, for the scars of the conflict are all concealed, if not wholly blotted out. The battle here, with all the woe and pain and death it brought to many an individual soldier, resulted in a glorious fruitage. For the laurel of victory was the precursor of the olive branch of peace. An entire nation, united and prosperous, now rejoices in the blessings that were made possible in God's good time by the bloody field of Gettysburg. Mission Days 
excellent example of an ongoing process in American history, memorializing how soldiers fought during the war. It's not just that they fought, it's the process of us as a community coming together to memorializing the service of our soldiers during the war. This is an ongoing process even today. Currently, the Michigan Civil War Association is in the process of doing something similar at the Battle of Antietam. They are ra currently raising funds to erect a Michigan monument to memorialize the service of Michigan's veterans on that battlefield. Thank you for joining us on location here at Gettysburg National Military Park. It's been our honor to talk about Michigan's role in the Battle of Gettysburg and how the soldiers were memorialized by the citizens of Michigan. I hope you've made some connection. If you're from a different state, come check out your state's monuments here on the battlefield. For Civil War Digital Digest, I'm Andy. We'll catch you next time.